Welcome to the tutorial More Drawing Tools. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use um, different options mostly under the drawing menu to optimize the way you work when using all the drawing tools. So to begin I drew a more complex version of the dojo that was created a few tutorials ago um, but I used all the same principles and concepts in that tutorial. I just made it a bit more complex. Um, all my lines here vanish to a single point, so it's a single point perspective drawing. Um, but it's really not too different from the original square box we had with the four lines um, radiating from the back wall. So let's start with the Arrange Tools. From the drawing menu, you'll see that there's a menu item called Arrange, and what it does is there are four options. One's bring to front, bring forward, send to back, and send backwards. Um, bring to front will immediately bring any line that's selected right to the front of all the other drawings. Um, bring forward would nudge it and increment um, forward, so it might still appear behind most of the other drawing objects, but not be on the backmost layer. Uh, send backwards would send slightly in increments backwards, and send to back would send it to the backmost. Of all the uh, of all the drawing items, um, and you can see right beside that all the keyboard shortcuts are listed. So let's go forward here, and I colored these beams in different colors. So you'll be able to see when they pop in front or behind one another. Um, so if I select this black line in the back, and then use the keyboard shortcuts, Command up key, what I'm doing is I'm trying to incrementally bring it forward a little bit at a time. So if I click off right away you'll see nothing really happened. I keep clicking and eventually you'll see that it'll come forward. I think if you go one back, I think it just, yeah. So here it's on top of the burgundy beams but behind the set of burgundy beams which lets you know actually that this, this uh, this burgundy beam is actually slightly behind this one right here. And these are like micro increments because as you draw in the camera view, um, the first drawing that you draw is going to be behind the second drawing, which is going to be behind the third drawing unless you use the draw behind option. So they're technically staggered, uh, you know, apart from each other, but exist all in the same layer. So when you use uh, the top and side view, what you really see is everything on the same layer. You can't see these individual drawings increments. You can only see what's on a specific layer. But you can do little tests like this, nudging things backwards and forwards to see where something is on the drawing plane. Um, so if I take now the yellow beam and I use Command uh, Shift forward, you'll see that I can bring this yellow beam right to the front right away. I didn't have to do all those little increments to bring it forward. And that works of course with bringing it backwards, command shift back. So now it's not only behind these burgundy beams, it's all the way behind all the other lines in this drawing space. So the next thing I'd like to talk about are the different ways to convert lines. Once again we'll go back to the drawing menu and we'll see that under the convert menu item there are three conversion types. Um, once again, they're grayed out because I have nothing selected where I to actually select something and then go back. You'll see that some of them actually um, become enabled depending on what kind of line type that I selected. So there's pencil lines to brush strokes, brush strokes to pencil lines, and stroke to pencil lines. So right now we have what we call a pencil line here. It wasn't actually created with the pencil line, it was created with the rectangle tool, but it's a central vector just like the pencil tool or the polyline tool, so it's considered a pencil tool um, or pencil stroke. So if we go to drawing, convert pencil lines to brush strokes, we see that now there's actually, it's hard to see if it's yellow on yellow. Uh, maybe I'll do it to this one here, it might be a bit more obvious. Convert pencil lines to brush strokes. You can see here now that there's no central vector line, there's an actual contour vector, um, a contour vector line. We can do the opposite with brush strokes. So here on the floor, the lines sort of making up these little tatami mats and they also give a nice perspective array were actually made with the brush tool. You can even tell because some of them are a bit thinner, they're irregular. 
you know, there's they're not uh, as uh, the width is not uniform like they are with those lines made with the pencil tool. So if we select one of these lines and go to the same menu, we can go drawing, convert, brush strokes to pencil line now. So as we do that, we see that now what used to have sort of varied width has a uniform thickness throughout. I'll even show you on this one, which is even more obvious. Here it's very thick. Here it's very thin. So if we convert this line, we see now that it has a uniform, a uniform thickness. So it has a little bit of a bend in it because of, you know, it was trying to uh, normalize what was there before. The last item on the list is strokes to pencil lines and what that means is it takes all invisible lines and turns them into pencil lines and then of course from those pencil lines you can make them into brush strokes. So here in the dojo it looks like you can see all the lines that are visible but if you actually use the keyboard shortcut D um, you can also see it from the view menu view show show strokes you can see all the hidden lines so for example here across the top band it looks like there's no lines there but if you hit the keyboard shortcut D clearly there are some lines there so if you decide that you'd like these lines to become visible to have a width you can select them and then right click and from the right click menu go to convert strokes to pencil lines And the width that uh, the software is using is the width that you'll find in entered in, in any of the central vector line tools. So here it's a width of 10. Um, the pencil, I believe it's the same. It's a width of 10. Um, same for the shape tools. There's a width of 10. So that's, on, that's the width that was given. You can also select these lines and, of course, just enter in a thinner value like that. something like that. Um, so if you have a value of zero entered into one of these shape tools, um, they actually all are linked, so if you change it to zero for one, um, it'll be zero for the other. Um, and it's the same for the polyline, so it's now zero. And the pencil, it's also now zero, even though I entered it into the field of one of the shape tools. Um, and then you try to do this command, it won't work because it'll convert it to the value entered in the tool properties panel for any of those tools. So if it's zero, it'll stay zero, which is what an invisible line is. The next thing I'd like to show you is the optimizing feature. But to do this, let's choose a section of brush lines that have all different colors. Um, one of them a transparent color specifically. So this one's uh, currently a pencil line, so we just made it a brush stroke. This one, let's make this uh, semi-transparent, and this has and that's a brush line too, so that's good. So when you optimize, what you're doing is you're essentially flattening all the little mini nudge layers um, in a single layer that you would see here in the timeline. Um, so these, these layers aren't really accessible, but when we nudged forwards and backwards, you saw that all of these lines exist on their own plane. Um, so if we flatten them onto their a single plane, then we essentially are saving uh, a little bit of uh, space. We're making the fossa slightly smaller, and that's optimizing your drawing. But the risk is, is that you don't want to lose the look of any of your drawings. So if you have intentional semi-transparent lines that uh, you know make a different color where they overlap with another line, when you flatten lines, this disappears. Um, and you usually want to keep that. So if you optimize, you can make a big selection, flatten everything that's solid, and keep everything that's transparent as is. So just to show you quickly, if I move this around, you can see that these are these are different shapes. They're completely separate from one another. They have their own thing going. Oh, this one actually needs to be converted as well to a brush stroke, which is good. So then we'll select these three and we'll go to Drawing, Optimize, Optimize. So now what I just did, if you just saw the lines connecting uh, 
the burgundy column uh, disappeared, and that's because now there's actually a hole where um, this black line sits because they're actually flat and they're all in the same layer. You can't move them independently. They are intersecting with one another. But this blue line has remained intact on its own mini layer because it's transparent and it wanted to retain that transparency. So that's what the optimizing does. The next feature I'd like to show you is the remove extra strokes uh, command. This feature is best used when you want to unpaint scanned images that have been vectorized. Um, often when you try to unpaint them, contour lines are left over. So this is best used for that. Um, I'm going to give you a more practical example to show you what I mean. So let's zoom in here. Um, so this burgundy beam was uh, drawn with separate brush strokes unlike the other one that was made with the rectangle tool. So let me just pull the edges out. Sometimes when you paint with the brush tool, you often cross um, over the corner points because you don't come to a full stop at the corners. So as you learned it in a previous tutorial, if you use the cutter tool with the mouse gesture, you can get rid of these lines like that. Um, but what you don't see is that after you flatten your object, you still sometimes get these corner points that are like separate objects. So this is still, you know, not optimal for your drawing. You want this to be one object. So what you can do is select this and then go to Drawing, Optimize, Remove Extra Strokes. And when you do that, you actually create a full shape without any of those extra invisible lines um, dividing your object into different shapes. The next thing I'd like to show you is how to access the grid. Um, the easiest way in the camera view is actually to bring up the camera view toolbar, which you can do by going to Windows Toolbars Camera View. And it's actually the first icon in the toolbar. Um, if you want to change some of the options for the grid, you can go to View, Grid, and the first one actually is the Show Grid, which was the same thing. It does the same command or functions the same way as the icon we just uh, pressed. Um, and then here you can change your grid to be Grid Outline Only, Underlay, which it is right now, which means it sits under the drawing, the drawing elements, um, or Overlay, which puts the grid on top of your drawing elements. You can change the grid from being a default 12 field grid to a square grid or to a, a 16 field grid. Um, these things probably mean more if you're a traditional animator. However, it's always useful to use a grid um, when doing something architectural like the dojo. Um, and the grid, once you turn it on, is also turned on in the drawing view. So at first, uh, that might look a little bit uh, daunting and a bit confusing, but on closer inspection, this is a really good way to line up and, and set up any type of drawing where you need to mimic perspective accurately. Let's back up here as well. I'm going to turn off the grid. It's a bit hard. So the last thing I'd like to talk to you about is grouping. So as you can see, the two lines here are two separate drawing elements. You can select them both and then use the keyboard shortcut command G. I believe in Windows that's control G. And now if you select or you try to select one of the two lines, they both get selected. Um, this is super useful for say the, the elements in the face of a character where you want to make sure they all get moved around together if you're moving them. It's also great um, if you want to rotate or scale or skew a bunch of objects um, and you want these transformations applied on all of them together and at once. And just as you can group the elements um, on a specific layer, you can also group layers together. So let me select a few here. So I have all the rabbit layers, the clean, the shadow, the sketch. Um, I could use Command-G to group these, but I'll show you when you go up to the Edit menu 
um, the separate options you have for grouping. So if we were in the camera view and we had selected those two lines, the group and then afterwards the ungroup feature would have been enabled. Um, here it's the same keyboard shortcut to group selected layers, um, but then if you want to ungroup you have to actually come uh, to this menu at the top and then ungroup selected layers. So let's let's group the selected layers and as you see here now they're a group that you can collapse which cleans up your timeline quite a bit which is nice. Um, that's pretty much it I believe for more drawing tools. Um, stay tuned for the next tutorial adding colors.